What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TVs. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be discussing a very technical topic regarding textile construction. We've already mentioned this in a previous video where we went over a knitted textile versus a woven textile. And as you guys know, there are three main types of fabric families that exist. We have our knitted fabrics, we have our woven fabrics, and then we have a third niche category that is considered the non-woven fabrics. We can go into another video on that specific topic, but today we'll be specifically looking at woven textiles. So what does it mean to be a woven textile? Well, that's what this video is going to discuss, and then we're going to be looking at the seven key weave types that exist. Because believe it or not, there's not just one type of weave and each weave that we see depends on the structure of the yarns and each type of weave will have a specific set of properties that will lend itself to a specific use case scenario. So this video is gonna be extremely technical. If you guys are interested in this type of stuff, this is the video for you. So buckle up, you guys are in for a good one. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. So before we get right into the topic on different types of weaves, we'll give you guys a quick recap on woven textiles. Weaving is one of the most common types of textile productions and it involves interlacing two sets of yarns at 90 degree angles. These two types of yarns are both the longitudinal warp yarns that go from up to down and the latitudinal weft or otherwise known as filling yarns that go left to right. Different types of weaving or different patterns of weaving these interlacing yarns is what creates the different weave types that we'll be discussing in these videos. And different methods of weaving will give you different characteristics, which will lend themselves to specific applications. We'll observe these different weaves through the lens of four key categories. Number one is the structure. Number two is the appearance. Three is the physical properties. And four, I'll give you guys specific examples of each type of weave that I discuss. We'll start off with the basic weave. So this is the standard weave that you see pretty much everywhere. And it simply involves individual weft and warped threads that are passed over each other in a square pattern. So it's the most simple type of weave construction where one warp yarn is passed over one weft yarn. The appearance of a basic weave is usually flat, so there's no distinct type of geometry on the surface, and there's no distinct visual design. However, you can have specific designs which use different color threads, so different color yarns, and yarns with different thicknesses to create ribbing effects. But if you're going for a standard weave, this is not necessarily the application where you'll get fancy with it. A standard weave is the most basic and most efficient type of weave that gives you the maximum durability for the least amount of cost. Some of the physical properties of a basic weave is it's extremely easy and inexpensive to produce. The yarn count will typically determine the durability and it's extremely efficient in its usage of these yarns. Some typical fabrics that we see using the basic weave structure or the plain weave structure are Batiste, cheesecloth, creatine, gingham, prickle, wool, and plaid. So these types of fabrics that you see out in the market, if you recognize those names, know that they're using a basic weave structure and now we've discussed those properties. Next up, we have the basket weave. The structure of a basket weave involves interlacing two or more warp yarns with two or more weft yarns, otherwise known as the filling yarns, to create a balanced basket-like structure. The basket weave is a variation of the standard plain weave and it typically creates an attractive checkerboard pattern. You can accentuate the checkerboard look by creating or using contrasting color yarns for either the weft or the warp yarns to push or to accentuate that 
aesthetic. When it comes to the properties of a basket weave fabric, typically it's still inexpensive in its production, it's very, very drapeable, and it's quite absorbent. When it comes to comparing it to a plain weave, the issue here is it's more easily soiled because of its more open structure, and at the same time, it's less durable than a plain weave. Some common types of basket weave fabrics that we see out in the everyday market are monk sloth and oxford. Next up, we have the ribbed weave. The ribbed weave is a variation of the plain weave where the whales or the cords are created using a distinct yarn. This is what gives the ribbed weave its rib-like structure and these yarns can either be substituted in for the warp or the weft, otherwise known as the filling yarns. Next up, we have the ribbed weave. The ribbed weave is a variation of the plain weave where the whales or the cords are created in an accent yarn. This is what gives the textile its rib-like structure. These can either be woven in with the warp or the weft, aka the filling yarns. When it comes to the properties of a ribbed weave, typically ribbed weaves offer extremely good drape. Depending on how prominent the rib effect is, this can affect the durability of the fabric. At the same time, excess tension can cause the yarn slippage, which can cause the entire textile to unravel. Some typical fabrics that we see with a rib weave-like structure in everyday use are Beglin, broadcloth, dimti, fell, poplin, rep, taffeta, and finally grog strain. Moving on, we have the twill weave-like structure. Twill is an extremely common type of weave and it's characterized by three shaft or higher warp or weft floats. So float has to do with how the threads appear when you're looking at them, especially under a magnifying glass you'll notice with floats is that they don't interlace under any of the counterpart yarns. So in this case with twill, you have three shafts or higher. So you have three portions of the yarns which float over their counterpart yarns. And this could either be the weft or the warp yarns. That's why when you look at twill up close, you'll notice these diagonal lines. And these diagonal lines can either go in the right or the left direction, depending on how these floats are stepped. When it comes to the appearance of twill weave fabric, you have either variations of left or right hand diagonal lines. And when it comes to the specific structure of twill weave, you can have things like houndstooth, you can have a chevron effect, that's typically called herringbone. At the same time, these types of twill weaves can be enhanced using colored yarns to give that speckled or that textured effect. When it comes to the properties of twill, this is where twill has the edge on other types of weaves. It's extremely strong and provides a firm texture, which specifically lends itself to the words, the use case scenarios. In this case, twill is extremely common and it's what creates denim. That's why you see denim is created with that speckled effect. If you look at blue denim, that's an interlacing of blue and white yarns. At the same time, you have an extremely good drapeability and resilience to the fabrics. Very, very tough fabric and can be used on workwear, which is a very good potential benefit of this fabric. It's also possible to develop a shine with twill fabric, so that's something to bear in mind if something you want or you don't want. And by varying the warp and the weft yarn colors, you can create extremely interesting types of designs. Some typical fabrics that we see in the everyday marketplace that use the twill weave in their construction are things like denim, drill, gabardine. We also see things like tweed, housetooth, and finally, we see herringbone used commonly with twill weave-like structures. Moving forward is a type of weave structure that needs no introduction. It's one that you guys will most likely know, and that's satin. Satin is characterized physically with four shaft or higher warp floats in an uninterrupted diagonal. At the same time, the appearance of satin is smooth and compact. The uninterrupted warp diagonals can actually be viewed under a magnifying glass. When it comes to the physical properties of fabrics that use a satin weave structure, you have to bear in mind that it's extremely lustrous with remarkable drapeability. That's why you see satin used on a lot of feminine nightgowns. It's extremely drapey and it's something that complements the physique quite well, though one has to bear in mind that it is quite delicate. Because of the uninterrupted diagonals, 
they do have the opportunity to be snagged and when snagging occurs with a weave, you can unravel the entire fabric, which is definitely not a plus in this case. Some typical everyday fabrics that we see using a satin weave structure are things like standard satin, slipper satin, duchess satin, crepe or crepe black satin, and these types of satin combinations can create different effects with different durability. So do look at the type of satin that best fits your needs and your aesthetic. Next, we have the variation of satin or like the sister fabric of satin, which is called sateen. And with sateen, here we have four shaft or higher weft floats as opposed to warp floats. So if you look at the structure on the magnifying glass, where with satin, we have the floats in the warp fabric or the warp yarns. In this case, we have them in the weft yarns. So going left to right. And this is also what creates this extremely smooth and lustrous version of satin. When it comes to the physical properties of sateen fabric, it's actually identical to satin fabric. And these types of fabrics can also be sharonized, if I'm saying that correctly, to obtain a lustrous finish. Some typical fabrics that we see are in the name, it's just sateen. It's a very specific type of fabric and one that is commonly used. Last but not least is a weave fabric that you've probably seen in everyday use, but not one that you might have been able to call out. And that's crepe fabric. Crepe fabric is characterized by a combination of a plain weave and either satin or sateen like weave structures. In terms of the visual and physical appearance of crepe fabric, you have a textured, crimpled and crisp surface that has an irregular and indistinct pattern. It's almost like it's erratic in its execution and crepe actually has an extreme amount of variety in its surface conditions. So it can create some interesting textures if you let it. And in terms of the physical properties of crepe fabric, it can have an interesting texture, like I said, if you allow it to, and at the same time, you'll get really good strength and durability, resilience, depending on things like the fibers that you're using, the yarns, the twist, the structure, and the overall compactness of the fabric. When it comes to the physical properties of crepe fabric, like I mentioned before, you can get some interesting textures out of it, and it may have good strength, durability, and resilience, depending on a number of factors, and these are things like the number of fibers used, the types of yarns used, the twist, the structure and the compactness of the weave structure. Some common everyday crepe fabrics that we see are granite, moss crepe, sand crepe, and finally wool crepe. So guys, that's pretty much it when it comes to the different types of basic weaves that exist out there. We can do a separate video on more advanced weave types. I didn't want to include them in this video because it would be quite long, but I hope you guys understand that weaving and alternating the ways that you add your wet and your warp yarns can create a world of variety. The world of textile production is so interesting and it's something that I'm extremely passionate about and hope you guys are as well. If you guys want to see more videos on these technical weaving knitting topics, please let us know in the description or let us know in the comments below. We always enjoy hearing from you guys. If you guys aren't subscribe to the channel, please consider doing so. We put out great content on a week to week basis. We also have a podcast on Apple Music and we have one on Spotify. It's called the Fit Design Podcast. We put out a series of small bite-sized episodes called Fit Bite that I highly recommend you guys check out. And if you guys have stuck along this long, thank you so much for tuning in to Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.